Telus fractures. These are the topics that we are going to cover in this video. Basic anatomy and blood supply of the talus. 70% of the talus is covered by cartilage. At the top of the talus, there is cartilage. At the bottom of the talus, there is cartilage. That's why fracture of the talus, body or neck, will injure the cartilage and that will result in arthritis. Subtalar arthritis is the most common complication after talus fractures. The talus is composed of a head, a neck, a body, a lateral process, and a posterior process. Artery of the tarsal canal supply the lateral two-thirds of the tailor body. The deltoid branch of the posterior tibial artery may be the only blood supply remaining in type 3 tailor neck fractures. Evascular necrosis of the talus. Evascular necrosis depends on the extent of the initial fracture displacement. The incidence of AVN correlates with the degree of displacement and the severity of the fracture. It goes from 10% in type 1, the non-displaced, to 100% type 4, that is displaced in three joints. Mechanism of injury and the classification of Taylor fractures. The talus becomes fractured by forced dosiflexion and axial loading. The fracture usually occurs to the talus neck, but it may occur in the body in about 15 to 20% of cases. Patient may have a lateral process fracture. The patient may complain of lateral ankle pain, and this fracture could be missed thinking that the injury is just an ankle sprain. Another name for that injury is snowboarder's fracture. CT scan is very helpful for this fracture. The posterior process fracture, it is a very rare entity. It's difficult to see, difficult to diagnose, and the surgery is usually difficult. Hawkins classification for Taylor neck fractures. Type 1, non-displaced fracture with 10% avascular necrosis. Type 2, fracture of the neck with subtalar dislocation or subluxation and 50% AVN. Type 3, fracture of the Taylor neck with subtalar and tibiotalar subluxation or dislocation with the incidence of AVN is high, 90%. Type 4, fractures with subtalar and tibiotalar dislocation in addition to telunavicular subluxation or dislocation, the AVN is 90 to 100%. Lateral process fracture, it can be missed as an ankle sprain, and if it is displaced, you need to do surgery. And if it is displaced and the fragment is small, you can excise the fragment. If it is non-displaced, you will do short leg cast, non-weight bearing, for six weeks. There are three types of lateral process fracture. Type 1, avulsion. Type 2, a large fragment involves the subtalar joint and it will need surgery. Type 3, comminuted fracture. Usually you treat it initially with a cast. You may need to excise it later on. Excision of 1 cm of the lateral process fracture will affect the lateral talocalcaneal ligament but it does not affect the ankle or the subtalar stability. 
The posterior process has a medial and lateral tubercle separated by a groove for the flexor hallucis longus. The posterior process fracture is a rare injury, usually missed on the initial x-rays, and it can be misdiagnosed as an ankle sprain. It could resemble an ostrigonum. What is the Hawken sign? It is a subchondral lucency seen in the dome of the talus at six weeks on mortis view x-rays. Hawken sign is a subchondral radiolucent band more commonly seen on the medial side on the mortis view. How can sign mean there is vascularity and there is resorption and there is no AVN? Absence of radiolucency should not be a reliable sign for the development of a vascular necrosis. If you don't have Hawken sign, it means there may be interruption of the blood supply and the vascularity of the talus. Hawken sign is usually seen between six to eight weeks after the injury. You will have disuse osteopenia, and it's caused by resorption of the subchondral bone. Hawken sign is a good indicator of Taylor's vascularity following Taylor fractures. It is unlikely AVN will develop at a later stage after the injury if the patient x-rays shows the Hawken sign. Hawken sign is 100% sensitive and 58% specific. If it is present, it indicates that the talus is alive and there is a good prognosis. Its absence does not rule out an intact vascularity. Once the fracture heals, begin weight-bearing, restricting weight-bearing beyond that which is needed for healing of the fracture does not decrease the risk of vascular necrosis. At three to six months postoperatively, AVN can be seen on the x-rays as sclerosis. Radiology you're going to get x-rays, AP, lateral, and canally view. In canally view, the foot is 15 degrees pronated with maximum plantar flexion. The x-ray beam is directed 75 degrees cephalad. CT scan is very helpful in talus fractures. MRI is sensitive for detecting a vascular necrosis as it shows decreased signal on T1. In an MRI studies, the use of titanium implants for surgery allows better visualization than stainless steel implants. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.